What if I told you this species of cactus is under threat right now? Right now, there is an invasive species known as Cactoblactus cactorum that is feasting on this cactus species. Now, why does this even matter? This cactus isn't even truly native here. No, but this cactus is very closely related to our native prickly pear cactus. While this is the variety that is grown for commercial consumption, these red prickly pear, or purpley, purpley pear, are actually delicious to eat. And they're sold as an agricultural crop for many third world countries. Why is this important? Is if this cactus moth finds itself a new host in our native prickly pear cactus, that can have different effects for different species of animals that depend on the native prickly pear cactus, the gopher tortoise, as well as many other animals that depend on the moisture inside of prickly pear, that especially adapted abilities to consume prickly pear cactus. For however, this moth is not native. Since this moth is not native, there are no native parasitoid wasp that would lay their larva inside of the cactus moth. A Cactoblactus cactorum is a moth that will go up to one of these barbs like this and it places its abdomen on one of these sharp spines. It then proceeds to lay egg clusters on those sharp spines. And these egg clusters can contain anywhere from 20 to 50 eggs in it. And each one of those eggs has a very high success rate at becoming an actual larva or a premature caterpillar. And each one of those premature caterpillars is already laid on the perfect suitable host, this prickly pear cactus. And each one of those larvae will then bore into the cactus, and they'll begin to devour the insides of the cactus. This is some old damage when we first discovered this invasive species on my cactus. These caterpillars can damage the cactus so much they become unstable. They'll then fall to the ground. And of course, cactus are very resilient and can regrow from the ground. But these moths are just as resilient. The first thing you'll notice is oozing, similar to what you see here. The, dark, uh, the discoloration going down. And that's because we had actually found Cactoblactus cactus inside of the pad just above that. We we're forced to remove the whole pad, forced to remove that whole pad and this whole pad. And the larva had actually extended down into this pad as well. And these Cactoblactus moths are very prolific. They have a very quick gestation period, just a few months. So multiple batches will be born in one year. That means you can take one Cactoblactus moth and it can lay one cluster of 50 eggs. And then 50 eggs in turn lays 50 more clusters of eggs. Before you know it, you have an epidemic that's out of control. And a single specimen of this cactus would quickly be eradicated before you even had any hope of getting this under control. Now where this moth is native to in Argentina, it has natural parasitoid wasps that actually feed on the Cactoblactus moth. It'll implant a larva into the larva and then the wasp larva will consume the moth larva. Natural selection and co-adaptation and co-evolution. These things have co-evolved together. If you want to have any hope at controlling the Cactoblactus moth, then you're going to have to get those egg sacs under control. You literally have to go out here at least every two weeks and search for those egg clusters. You will then pull the egg clusters off and contact your local research agency. Now right now, there's a big outbreak of Cactoblactus moth in Citra down in South Florida. But right now, my yard in North Central Florida is the northernmost point of identified and known places where the Cactoblactus moth is actually located. But the first step to solving a problem like the cactus moth is to get awareness out there. Allow other people to learn about potential problems in their landscape because this isn't that uncommon of a species of cactus. And many people have it, and have never heard of the cactus moth. In fact, I'd never heard of it until I did a little more research into what was going on with my cactus, and an entomology person came by my house and helped enlighten me on what was going on with my cactus. 
Well, I know this isn't one of my normal style videos. It's not a cool video in some eyes. It is an important video because something has to be done. We gotta to continue to do work on the parasitoid wasps that feed on the Cactoblactus moth in order to eventually become introduced here as well to keep this moth under control because the repercussions if the Cactoblactus moth finds this new suitable host, which I found in my yard over there, a new suitable host, could be farther reaching than just if Cactoblactus moth affects this particular species. There's many species of cactus and in my own yard I have several. So if it finds multiple suitable hosts, the damages can be irreversible. And we don't want some kind of extinction level event happening. It's our duty as stewards of this land and the place that we call home to take care of these each and every specimen we like in our environment. I would love for you to just hit that like button. It's super easy. It's like right down there. And subscribe to this channel. We'll see you next time. Right here in the forest of the monarch that we created. Over five years of hard work to create a jungle again from what was once a field like they did in that giant field that used to be a pine forest. And we'll see you next time in the great outdoors. Peace. Peace. Everyone wants to save the planet. I know we can do it. We, we are, are the many. many. Welcome to the colony. Together we have the power to improve our planet. Don't ever underestimate it. The tools are right in front of us. It's your heart and mind at your fingertips. And now we have the connections. We're building a team with a mission. All about conservation. Communication around the earth only takes seconds. Together we will change this planet. All this talk about extinction. So many good reasons to listen. Our existence. Grow, Grow a garden, garden and reduce your dependence. Your dependence. Put native trees and flowers in it. Bees, Bees and, and butterflies, butterflies pollinate them. them. Seeds fall and create new plant seedlings. These plants take in carbon and create oxygen. That is a step towards a solution. That is your power in action. Making a difference, you have our support, friend. Thank you for every moment you listen. If you choose to, thank you for your subscription. I put everything into this content. It's our one and only planet. All the support, I truly appreciate it. Your love alone makes it worth it. I've been stung over a dozen times. I'm not sure how many different places by over a dozen different species, most with similar reactions. We must respect these bees for pollination. A little sting, that is nothing. That's just their form of protection. We live in a colony. Are we really that different? New videos here every Thursday. That is my commitment. If you have the power to do something positive, you have the responsibility to do it. Well, I said it, I guess I'm obligated. I convinced myself and I'm excited for the changes. We need to be self-aware and stop waiting for legislation because growing more food means less pesticides to produce it, which means more pollinators like bees will not be affected. Growing our own food means an opportunity for you to teach a child what real food is because growing food for you means less fuel for transporting it. More food for you means less greenhouse gases. More food for you means less pollution and fertilizer in our water systems. Welcome to the great outdoors, friends. Let's make a difference. I'm Alex, by the way. Species of moss is known as Cactoblactus cactorum.